Hey there, this is Pry Leviticus. Uh, so I tried to shoot this video yesterday. I did shoot this video yesterday, but I forgot to turn on my mic, so there was no vocals, which was kind of lame. Anyway, uh, what this is is I'm gonna go through the the training in Star Wars Squadrons and just talk about what different stuff does and some general Star Wars knowledge and stuff. I'm kind of a Star Wars nerd, so bear with me if it gets a little stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, we're gonna go to practice. We're gonna do. We're gonna start with Galactic Empire because the bad guys are always more fun. And we're gonna start in story mode. It's super easy. Um, this game. Uh, this is a game I have been waiting for since it was first announced. I was super excited. Me and my, my brother, Mikey, have been super excited for it. Um, we're old, so we played the original X-Wing back in the day for PC, and X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and all those good ones. And we always, back in the day, we talked about how much fun it would be if you could play it multiplayer and battle each other, and we could have dogfights, and all kinds of good stuff and then furthermore we talked about how cool it would be if it was in VR and you could just live in the Star Wars universe and you know blow shit up uh, and it's finally a reality we've been waiting and waiting and it's finally a reality you can finally pilot your TIE fighters and whatnot um, and it's just a beautiful thing um, so what we're going to do, uh, first off, uh, we're going to start with just a standard TIE Fighter. Um, right now I have the uh, TIE Interceptor queued up because that's, that's my baby. I love me some TIE Interceptor action. Um, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. So let's, let's see here. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want... By the way, EA, the, the menus in this make no sense. Like, I'm totally using my uh, Thrustmaster here, you can see. Um, and why am I not using the top hat on the joystick to control the menu? I don't know. But it's L1 and, R3, or L1 and L3, which I guess isn't terrible. I mean, it's on the top of the joystick, but still, it's a little silly. Anyway, um... Let's, uh, why is that not, okay, um, I need to switch, see this, this is another thing that's kind of dumb, so I'm here, and I can't, at least not that I know of, can't switch what ship I VR blackout. Um, anyway, you can't switch easily what ship I want from here, which I don't understand why that's even a thing. Um, but there's no buttons that I've found that let you switch what ship you want right here. You can... Maybe it's customized. Is it customized? Oh, it is. Okay, there we go. See, I'm, I'm dumb. So... Uh, let's recenter. Make sure we're dead on. Okay. So we're going to start with the TIE Fighter. Um, the TIE uh, LN Fighter is the unforgettable symbol of the Imperial Fleet. It is designed for high-speed dogfights against starfighters and is flexible enough to challenge enemy capital ships. I would argue that a little bit. Um, they are fast, uh, but... They have no shields, and if you can hit them, they will go down. Um, you see your max hull, max speed, max acceleration, maneuverability. Um, so we're going to select... Uh, actually, we're gonna, I'll go to edit loadout so you can see what it has. Um, it starts out with primary weapon, which is your standard laser cannon. Um, Left auxiliary is a repair system. Um, unlike the X-Wings, which have droids, X-Wings, Y-Wings, A-Wings, etc., have droids that 
help repair your ship. Um, the tie wing does not, but it has an internal repair system that helps to uh, repair your ship. Um, and it's bound, uh, at least on the Thrustmaster stick, it's bound to L1. Uh, the Red Auxiliary Concussion Missiles, um, it's a missile, it concusses, uh, it's bound to L3. Countermeasures is bound to L2, I think. I don't know, it's hard to tell with that helmet on, I can't really look. I think it's L2. Anyway, um, this one has Seeker Warheads, which basically shoots a bunch of little missiles out behind you so that uh, anyone following you gets tripped up by the missiles or it'll take out missiles that are locked on you or whatever. Um, like I said, it doesn't have shields, it's just a standard hull and the twin ion engine, which is where the word tie comes from. Twin ion engine. Good to know. Um, and if you look up at the top here, you can L1 and L3 to go through uh, the setups for it. You can get different paint jobs. Um, you need to get glory points to, uh, to get the ship you want etc. There's a lot of different ones. That one's pretty dope. Um, so you can customize for your own. I think that one's probably one of my favorites. That's pretty badass too. Um, but I'm kind of a Star Wars purist. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I kind of like just the standard TIE Fighter, you know? Um, this is decals, you can get Vader's head on there, different versions of it, different symbols, etc. I'm kind of surprised that the Imperial symbol, it's got to be in here somewhere, I would think. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Imperial symbol. The placement on that is just weird, though. Um. I don't know if I really like the symbols all that much. Um, this is... What is this? I don't know. SD Chimera Grand Admiral Thrawn may be missing, but his legacy remains. Oh, it shows a... That's kind of interesting. It shows a... Uh, a um, hologram in your cockpit. I don't know what good that would do you. Uh, that would be cool if it would keep updated with how many ships you killed. But I doubt it does. That's kind of cool. Veda. Uh, whoop, shit. So, this is dashboard. I don't know what the dashboard stuff does. Carbonized Kohan? I don't see it anywhere. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's cute. A 3PO head. <laughs> Okay, that's weird. A mouse droid. <laughs> Jesus. Tie pilot, that's kind of cool. Medal of the Emperor's Fist, that's kind of cool. Lord Vader statuette, that's creepy as shit. GNK power droid figurine, that's kind of neat. Uh, hanging flare, so I'm assuming. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Imperial ID badge. What was that? Crystal charm. Imperial ID badge. That's kind of cool. Miniature interrogation droid. <laughs> Stupid. Krat dragon tooth. <laughs> in case you're wondering, a Krat dragon... Um, you never see him in any of the original Holy Trilogy, but you do hear Ben Kenobi make a Krat dragon call uh, on Tatooine when he's trying to scare away the Tusken Raiders. So, there you go. Um, cool. Rancor. 
My <laughs> ATST, nice. <laughs> Fucking stormtrooper helmet. Star destroyer. I'm wondering if as you fly if it if it bumps and Oh yeah. Yeah, that's kinda cool. Um So let's see what uh select. What are my choices? Sonar guided burst cannon. Yeah, it looks like you need your uh your your uh points from flying missions and stuff. Share ion torpedoes. Concussive missiles, emergency repair system, assault shield. So the assault shield is kinda neat. That's on the uh I think it's on the bomber. You can throw that up and just ram a motherfucker with your TIE fighter. Onslaught rockets. Cool, cool. What are my countermeasures? Chaff. So, ah, uh, see, Mikey? I, I told you it was chaff. Uh -huh. Chaff particles. Drop a cloud behind you that breaks locks and stops missiles and mines. Uh, this is what it's got right now. Fires multiple projectiles. Intercept missiles locked on you. is effective even when turning and at long ranges. Sensor jammer. All lockdown missiles lose you as a target and no one can lock on you for a duration. That's kind of cool. Has a long cooldown though. Uh, what are my hull choice? Oh shit. Center reflect hull. Reinforced. Laminasteel lam hull. Center agile hull. Dampener hull. That's cool. Although, I think as people get good and start gaining a bunch of rep and everything else, they're gonna unbalance everything. Twin micro thrust engine, twin slam propulsion, twin thrust, twin ion jet engine, unstable twin engine. So, anyway, that's. That's that, but we're gonna start with the TIE Fighter. Um, uh, and you can sh show load out if I can figure out the right button. I think it's that. So that's what I'm currently running with. Um, primary weapon, left auxiliary is repair, right auxiliary is concussion missile, countermeasures is seeker warheads, standard hull, twin ion engine. So that's just standard, super standard. Um, okay, so. We're going to launch. And uh, just fly around a little bit in the training sector, as it were. For some reason, I'm weirdly off-center. There we go. Okay. So, right now, if you look, I've got my, um, my speed and my rate of fire set to even. Um, and actually, I'm gonna fly down in here amongst the debris, and I'm gonna just stop so I can show you some things on the the setup here. Okay, so firstly, that right there is your um, your ship's health points, your ship's damage, whatever. Right now, you're at 100%. As it goes down, you'll uh, take damage, or you'll take damage as it goes down, and then eventually, it'll blow you the fuck up. Um, this is your radar. And I'm not real pleased with the radar. I wish it was a little more three-dimensional, but I am cool that they went with more of a um, old-school feel like in the original movies. 
so that's cool I guess I'll deal with it um, the two images you see on there the sort of boxy looking image with the tie in it is the image of my Star Destroyer which is way up there um, and that's what I flew from when I first launched um, the second image is, that looks kind of like a dick and balls is the uh, repair frigate or whatever I'll take you to that so you can see it let's get a little boost why no boost oh because I don't have any boost power I'll talk about that in a minute so you're not completely confused like I was so when you when you're in this area right here uh, it reloads your your missiles and if you have shields it reloads that it reloads it reloads everything so you're good to go um, so that's helpful uh, now if you look down here the flashing indicator there is your speed um, each ship has a top speed, um, but your top, top speed you're not going to reach until you put all the energy into your engine as opposed to your weaponry, and I'll, I'll go over that in a minute too. The, um, right now the speed is at zero. If I go to half speed with a TIE Fighter, it's about 70 seconds. Wait, why am I still in a interceptor? Shit, I thought I'm... Ah, hold on. I didn't even realize I was in a damn interceptor, because that's how dumb I am. So we're going to switch to... Let's switch ships. And deploy. Okay. Okay, so now we're in a TIE fighter. I should have noticed when I looked at that and it had curved wings. I wondered about that. Anyway, um... Still the same setup as you saw before. Um, this central panel here is when you're locked on to an enemy. It'll show you um, some information about them, uh, which is helpful. And actually, I think I think what I see there might be the reflection of the cockpit, and I think that's me sitting there. Although it looks like it has Vader's pauldron on which is interesting. I don't think TIE Fighter pilots have a pauldron like that, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, uh, so right next to the flashing button to the right there, or to the flashing panel to the right there, is your energy um, division, basically. Um, you've got the blue, which is your engines, and the red, which is your weapon systems. Um, if you're playing with the Thrustmaster, just so you know, I'll let the... Um, all the controls I'm going to talk about are Thrustmaster. I'm, I'm using a Thrustmaster for the PS4. It's just the standard, uh, what is it, the HOTUS 4, I think. Um, but uh, when, when you want to change it, you can easily change it with the thumb uh, or the hat on the uh, joystick on your right. Uh, pushing forward switches everything full power to weapons and you notice it kicks your engines way down um, let me give you an example here full speed in a TIE fighter 134 at weapons or I mean uh, at balanced energy okay with weapons all the way forward and your energy turned way down your full speed is 119 now, if I do uh, engines all the way up, which is tapping left on the uh, hat, and then I crank it again, that'll get you up to 150. And you'll notice on the speed indicator, those yellow boxes are filling. That is your boost. You can hit a boost with the triangle button, I believe. And we'll boost through some of this bullshit here real quick. Um, here we go. Boost. And that takes you up to 249. You're really cruising. 
and things can get tight real quick. But you'll notice it it uh it took that energy all the way down. I wish I could point with my hand so you could see what I'm looking at, but it's filling up right now, the little yellow boxes. Um, now I have full boost again, and I could boost for a while. Um, okay, so next, uh, we're going to switch over to full weapons. Actually, no, we'll switch to balanced, um, which is down on the hat. Um, if you look here, you see the indicator for the weapon system, okay? Um, and at balanced, you have basically one bar for your weapons. That's the red bar across the top with all the little ticks in it. Um, if I hold down the main fire button and fire my lasers, I'm firing my lasers. You see it chews it up pretty quick, okay? It goes back up slowly refills the bar. Uh, when it gets down to zero, you just can't fire anymore. You'll notice. Well, you can fire, but it's really slow. So you let that crank back up. But interestingly, uh, it only will crank up one full bar all the way across, which you'll see in just a second as it finishes. Okay, but if you put all your energy into your weapons, it superpowers them. So you basically get two full bars. And a higher refresh rate so that recharge is quicker and you can fire a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Um, if you notice, when it got down to the second bar like that, it started firing, like, not as hard. I believe that the uh, superpower, overpower shots hit harder, and then the second round is, or the second bar is just standard lasers. Um, okay. And then when you go back to balanced, it drops the overpower. You mean you can still use them up real quick? So keep that in mind when you're when you're playing with your uh, energy distribution in game. That even if you switch to a balanced energy or even a low energy for your weapons, if it's fully charged and you have the the harder shot, use it up quick before it goes away on its own. Because I mean, why not, right? Um, okay, below that, below the red bar there, you see three boxes with three symbols. The first box is your, uh, what is it, your primary, not your primary weapon, but your secondary weapon. Uh, it's bound to L1, uh, and that's a repair thing, and I can hit it now, but it's not going to do anything because my tie isn't broken at all. Uh, the one in the middle that says 8 is the chaff, or not the chaff, the missiles that you can fire behind you if, you've, if you're being locked on. Um, and I can kind of show you that. Um, let me turn around here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it when I fire it, but... Nope, you couldn't see a damn thing. And I just wasted a set. But they're easy to get back. You just fly back to the resupply frigate. And you notice it had a, uh, a downtime, too. Um, you fire it, and as long as it's gray, you can't fire it again. You see as it slowly fills back up, it comes back online, and then you can fire it again. The third uh, is bound to L3, and that's going to be your missiles. And yeah, there we go. So you can fire a missile anytime. I think you have to hold it, though. Um, but if you're locked on to a ship, you can fire it whenever you're locked on to them. But just hitting it doesn't do anything. You have to... Oh, no, you have to double tap it. And it'll fire a missile. That also has a cooldown time. We'll just pretend that it's because the... Uh, 
the missile tubes have to cool down or else you melt them or something. I don't know. I don't know why there's a cool down time. Probably just for game balance more than anything. Um, okay, so let's let's fly back to the giant dick and balls and we'll resupply and you'll get to see what that does. And there, everything's all recharged now, and it even tells you. Uh, so once you do that, you can just go about your business. Okay, so there's a couple other things to take into consideration here. Um, along with the um, energy distribution and whatnot, you have a couple of buttons that do other things. Um, the square button, if you hold it, you can switch between engines and weapons. Um, you, use, you hold it, you use the hat to put it on the one you want, you hold it on there and then release. Okay? Um, but it's easier, I've got it bound, at least on the Thrustmaster, I don't know what it's like on the PlayStation 4 controller, but on the Thrustmaster, it's just bound to the hat. So, it's easier to do it that way, quite frankly. Um, but if you want to, you can you can do it that way. Um, also, there's... I read something on Reddit today about there's a way to set up um, your power distribution so that it goes in points rather than go all or none or half balanced, whatever. You can do it like two pips at a time, I think. Um, then we have... Is it the O button? Yeah. So the O button, if you hold it down, um, you this is your objectives. You can you can um, you can uh, lock on targets to different things. But this doesn't really lock on a target itself. What it locks on is um, whatever uh, type you pick. So if you pick objectives, it always uh, it always locks on your objectives. If you pick starship systems, it locks on that. If you pick missiles, it locks on that. Pick my squadron, it locks on your squadron, so you can find them again real quick. Uh, targets attacker, you can do that. Last attacker. Uh, last attacker is nice, and I, I need to figure out how to bind that to a single button, because um, if you're flying, if you're caught in a circle of death, which is where you're chasing um, say, an X-Wing, and you're trying to blow them up, half the time, their wingman is going to get behind you and light you the fuck up. So, uh, as soon as you know you're being attacked, and you usually get a pop-up that says, hey, dumbass, you're being attacked, if you switch to last attacker, then it'll instantly target them. You peel off the guy you're chasing, you turn around, you blow up the asshole that's trying to kill you, and then you go about your business. And... Uh, by, by fighting that way, you are basically, you're keeping from getting blown up for one, and it might take you a little longer to take out the targets because you keep switching, but eventually you're going to start taking them out. And, I don't know, that's just the way I look at it, that's the way I fly. Um, so anyway, uh, we're just going to leave it on objectives for now. Um... The triangle... No, nope, that's not what I'm thinking. There was... What was it? Is it R2? Yeah, R2 um, lets you pick out something to say. Uh, Squadron, regroup. Yeah. So, in-game, if you're, if you're not hooked up with your buddies and you don't have your headset, you know, if you don't have your, your chat on... You can literally hold down R2, you know, if you're in danger. Need assistance. Right, and then it puts a a uh, beacon on you for a little bit so that they can find you and help you. Um, cheer. Looking good out there. Looking good out there. Yeah, thank you. But anyway, there's different different things you can say there. And then. Uh, 
I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything more I really wanted to show you with that stuff. Um, instead, let's just fly around a little bit and kind of get a feel. Um, your basic controls with the Thrustmaster, um, your left hand is going to be on your throttle. Right now, it's right in the center. You slide it all the way forward, and uh, you go fast. You pull it all the way back. You don't go at all. You put it in the middle. You go mid-speed. Um, and don't be afraid to uh, to play with your speed during combat because mid speed isn't going to get you away from someone, but it is going to keep you in control enough that you can uh, maybe do something. And also keep in mind that if somebody's behind you, one of the quicker ways to turn around is go real slow and turn around. Um, and you can also drift in this game, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I've only been playing it for a day like everyone else, and I don't know. I haven't really figured that out yet, but I will. Um, let's see. Uh, your right hand is on the joystick. Uh, pushing left or right turns you, which is kind of weird if you're used to flight sims, because usually pushing left or right controls your yaw. And that means, or it controls your roll. Yeah, your roll. Um, that means this. Which, by the way, if you're playing in VR and you're not used to this kind of thing, this can get you sick real quick. But I'm used to it. I've been playing PSVR since PSVR was a thing. Literally since day one. Um, okay, so... So uh, you can change that if you don't like that setup. Um, you can go to options, controls, or no, what is it? Oh, I hit the wrong. Uh, options, controls, you can control all that. Um, uh, let's see, throttle steps increment. Throttle friction. Uh, let's see. Drift input mode. Determines the control scheme used to initiate the drift maneuver when using a controller or flight stick. Hold, press and hold the input to drift, which continues as long as the input is held. Double tap the input to drift, which is continues long. Okay, so I have it set on hold. So, okay, that's how you drift then. When you do your boost, you just hold the button down and then do your your drifting, which I'm assuming is sort of like, you know, Tokyo Drift or something. Um, power management basic. Uh, this is what I was talking about a, a little bit ago about basic or advanced. Um, advanced power can be transferred between each system in smaller increments with a single button press. Holding the button maximizes power for the chosen system. Let's let's see what advanced does. I'd like to to play with that. Shield focus and power conversion controls determines the control scheme for managing shield focus power. Hold the input to control your shield's power. Tap the input to move shield back or convert. Um, okay, so that's another one that you can set to advanced or toggle, whatever. Um, comms wheel input. I'm not going to change any of that because I'm fine with all that. Um, Oh, you can set the dead zone. That's cool. It's right now set to zero. And I've seen a lot of people complain that the dead zone on the stick is too big. Um, I didn't really have a problem with it, but I don't know. We shall see. Maybe when they change it, um, it'll mess with me. But I'm I'm pretty okay with it for the most part. Um, invert flight. Okay. Let's see what this does. I want to see. Oh, that's cool. So down. Let's get back to the game here. So down uh, still brings you back to um, middle of the road. It balances your power down on the thumbs or the hat. Uh, up does two is it two pip increments or one? One pip increment to the firepower 
left is one pip increments to the engines. Right is also does fire. I don't know why right and not both do fire. I imagine there's an, a better way we could do that, but... Um, but I mean, whatever. It, it is what it is for now. Uh, and then... Let's... Let's get our engines all the way up and we'll do a boost and try to... Oh, shit. <laughs> we'll do a boost and try to do a uh, drift and see what happens with that. So that's cool. So you're kind of skimming sideways. Wonder if you can drift up and down too. Let's get some more boost power here. You know, your, your side to side moves a lot slower than your up and down. And maybe that's on purpose, I don't know. Maybe that's the dead zone issue they're talking about. I don't really see a big issue with the dead zone because I'm barely moving the stick and it's moving just fine. Maybe it's an issue because they want it closer to the center, so when you're tracking someone, it's easier to make real micro-fine adjustments. Make sure you kill them quick. Um, I don't really know. But, anyway. Um, just some fun stuff. Uh, if you got a missile lock on, use your surroundings. You're in a TIE fighter. It's maneuverable as hell. Use it. Oop. Kind of nicked that one. Uh, nicked that one, too. Okay. Let's try some dogfight. Man, I am getting some issues here with my headset. I wonder if I'm not close enough. Or maybe I'm too close. Let's try this. Let's move away a little bit. This one bad thing about the PSVR is sometimes it's a little wonky as far as uh, making sure that the camera can see you and whatnot. Now it's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, see, it's off-center. Maybe I'm off center. Who knows? Hmm. Better turn around here. Get back to the game. Whoop, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, weirdly off center. Trying to find my optimal placement here. Because it's not giving me the center I need. There we go. All right, that's a little better. I don't know, if you're playing on PSVR, you gotta kinda, you already know, you gotta kinda dick with the the placement and where your camera is and every other damn thing. I'm so looking forward to PSVR too. I mean, I love my PSVR, but there's only so much you can do with uh, light. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna get tight quick. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, I just fucked myself up. Oh, now I can use the repair, which is L1. There we go. 
it is repaired. It's got a pretty long refresh, as you see. So you can't really use it all the time, but it's good for if you're in a, a dust up with someone and need to, to get your shit straight again. Let's do a flyby on this defunct Star Destroyer. Oh, and then we'll do a flyby on our Star Destroyer because I want to show you how to take down a capital ship. God, I love that sound. Love the TIE Fighters. So this is the ship we just came out of. And we're going to take a cruise along the hull. Uh, you see that blue there? That's the shield generated around the Star Destroyer. Makes it real difficult to uh, do any damage to it. There's some missiles and whatnot. Look at that thing. Remember the original rollout on Star Wars? This is the kind of shit you see. This ship is fucking enormous. It's just beautiful. I love the Star Destroyer. Seriously, favorite ship in the Imperial fleet. Look at that gun. That gun's... That gun's bigger than my house. <laughs> I think I'm getting pushed away by the by the shield generator, maybe. I'm not really sure. Um, if you fly back up in there, you can switch ships, which is cool. Just an enormous ship. Now I'm not going very fast. I mean, you can you can crank a Tie Fighter and fly past a Star Destroyer pretty quick, but still, it's kind of cool. It's the engines on this beast. Huge, massive, massive engines. I don't even want to get close to him because I'm pretty sure he'd get vaped. So we'll fly up here. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, the engine just cooked me. So you do take damage when you fly too close to those. That's kind of cool. Let's use my repair. Back up to 100. get to the top of the ship here okay so there's the that's the conning tower and the uh, well in in most of the movies that's where you see the um, the bad guys standing and watching the fight the bad guys he says I think I just did a total loop. Yeah, so they would be in there watching the battle go on. Actually, probably in there watching the battle go on. Um, those are the shield generators for the Star Destroyer. And those are the first things, you, one of the first things you want to take out if you're fighting a Star Destroyer, is take out those shield generators, at least according to canon. I'm assuming it's the same in this game, but I haven't actually fought one yet, so we shall see. But um, take out the shield generators and then take out the ship. I mean, it's 
still not easy. I can't imagine. Yeah, all those little lights. People standing in there. All my Imperial mates watching the battle go on. All right, enough of this. Let's let's call in some X-wings to fight and see what happens. See if we get smoked. Uh, we're gonna just just two two squadrons of X-wings. We're gonna get in there real quick. We already got Rebel scum. Yeah, rebel scum. That bitch just attacked me. That was a target of opportunity. You gotta learn to lead them. Just like that, baby. Oh, he had a lock on me for a second. Uh hit. All right, I see what they're talking about with the dead zone. It kind of makes it hard to get a, a lock on someone. I missed him. Did I get him? No. Oh, I smoked him, though. Yep, I see what they're talking about. Alright, that's the end of those guys. I should have stayed here within the debris, because I can outmaneuver the shit out of him in debris. But I gotta figure out. Let's take a moment. Repairs. Okay, let's take a moment to look at controls. Ping target, acknowledge ping, com wheel, free look, focus shield, cycle target, or target my attacker. Okay, so you double tap X to target your attacker. I can dig it. All right, let's try that again, because I wasn't sure how to set that up. I've done it in other games before, but I wasn't sure how to do it here. So you can cycle targets with a single tap or double tap to target your attacker. So when we were just fighting and it said, I'm being attacked, you can double tap X, um, which is that middle button on the three buttons right there. Um, you can double tap X and then it'll target your attacker, and then you turn around and go after him. That's the strategy I was talking about. So let's try this again. Make sure everything is centered. Oh, I seem to be drifting a little again. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's do you deploy enemy squadron? Try to avoid his missile. 
See, a lot of times you can avoid a missile just by, um, just by being a TIE fighter and being fast as shit. Oh shit! That was a missile. Where are you? That worked a lot better. All right. Let's do, we're gonna do one more today. Let's do, this. whoop, shit, hit the wrong button. Uh, what else have we got? Y-wings, X-wings and Y-wings. X-wings, A-wings, and a U-wing support. That could be deadly. A-wings are fucking rude. What else do we have? Deploy enemy Corvette. That could be fun. Deploy enemy flagship. Oh boy. Start time obstacle course, switch ships. Let's, let's try this. What the hell? All right, where are you? We're gonna try to do a strafing run on this bastard. Try to hit him from behind. Oh boy. Not taking too much though. Doing pretty good.
Yeah, you got shit. Alright, we're gonna fly back to our... We're gonna fly back here. And get us some much needed juice. He's got way longer range than I do. He's sitting at. Oh, he's got 19% left. We're gonna take this motherfucker down. Taking enemy fire. When all else fails, drive like an asshole. Kinda didn't mean to ram him. Oh, I think I took him out. He is not but wreckage. Oh, I would have liked to see the ship come apart. Oh well. That was pretty cool. So anyway, oh boy, oh shit, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is Star Wars Squadrons, uh, this is my first video for it, I hope you liked it, I'm um, just trying to give some newbies like myself some ideas on how stuff works, I hope it helped. Um, and uh, I hope to see you out there playing. It's a pretty baller game. So, that is all. Have a good night, all.